How are you doing? Hi. Thanks for visiting me in my new home. Yeah. Would you like some alcohol? Well, uh, what do you have for me? We have some cognac, we have some whiskey, and this is some moonshine right over here. Give me some moonshine. You want some moonshine? Okay. Yeah. I'll pour you a glass. Yep. But you can keep talking, because I, I can pour a glass of moonshine and do an interview at the same time. Yeah. I'm not talented, yes. Okay, so you're multi-talented. Yes. Okay. Um, is that enough moonshine for you? I love it. Woo! Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you like some ice in that? Well, I think I have it like this. I'm a really qu quick drinker, so. Okay. I don't need the ice. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. I'll have some, uh, <sighs> some cognac myself. Maybe some whiskey. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, well, let me uh, start then. Um, well, you have now you have a new album out. Yes, I do. You do. And yes, I do. But first, I, uh, before I go into that album, I was wondering, how do you look back on Fatherfucker? Very fondly. Yeah? Yes. I like it a lot. I'm really glad I made that album. I'm really glad that both Teachers of Peaches and Fatherfucker were self-produced and, you know, um, self-made my, uh, my vision and um, I was really happy that now on my third album I felt comfortable enough to have a co-producer so that I could um, become a better producer and a better songwriter and so it's strange because the first two you did by yourself then mm -hmm. and <coughs> normally it's the other way around is it I don't know because sometimes when you when you feel comfortable uh, you have to learn to feel comfortable producing your own stuff and sometimes people well well I wanted to learn to feel comfortable doing it myself because I had a vision and I didn't want someone else to say well I'm a producer I, I know how you should do it you know and um, I think that came through with my style and I set my own precedent so when I have a co-producer come in they they know what I want to achieve and they can help me instead of trying to overproduce or take over and did it for you, was it <coughs> easy to do or was it still a bit of a struggle to work with a co-producer? It was fantastic because I, I picked a fantastic person, Mickey Petrelia, who worked with Beck and Eels and um, Electrocute and uh, Dandy Warhols. But I mostly picked him because I knew he had really good dance moves. So once we had a really good beat going, I knew that if he had a good dance move for it, then it would be a good song. Okay, and were the songs written while recording them? Half of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, I had, um, I had a... I went to L.A. because it's where he lives and I had um, a, hou a house, a heated swimming pool and a studio 24 hours. It was just me there and Mickey would show up in the morning and so that was great because I could at any time just go in the studio and do what I like or have a barbecue or... Yeah, because normally you... well, you, you live in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, was it do you th was it for you the music? Um, did it turn out differently because of recording over there compared to Berlin, or didn't it? Uh, uh, I don't really think so. No, I don't, because I I just had my my vision. Of it. But I I think I had just more time to develop uh, my ideas and um, and more confidence to say whether I really like this chorus or this structure or not be afraid to change things as much because I also am um, better uh, at using computers or like to, to cut and, and move things is really easy for me now so um, no I don't think it changed it, it just it just developed it more for me but what I was really happy about is that the album turned out produced and fatter but it didn't get watered down and I didn't lose my sound okay so that, that's, that's an amazing feat.